Hi, this is Jeff West with Oracle, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the WellLogic scripting tool, um, how to record scripts and edit them uh, in order to make the most use of WST. Uh, WST isn't the easiest technology to pick up and learn, especially if you want to try to create scripts from scratch. And one thing that helped me learn WST was the ability to record commands that I execute or I guess to actions that I take in the admin console and see the resulting WLST commands. And then I could take those, uh, learn the MBean structure, learn what type of commands were there, and take the resulting WLST commands from the recording and make functions out of those to do things like create a JDBC data source or a cluster server and so on. So the recording capability that the admin console offers is very useful um, for for learning WST but also generating WST scripts that you can uh, make good use out of. So for the demonstration I'll show you how to record a WST script from the console. Um, the script that I'm going to generate creates a JMS module with one connection factory, one distributed queue, and one topic. Uh, then we'll go ahead and activate those changes and see that those take effect and take the resulting WLST that has been generated and modify it to make parameter parameterized methods uh, that we can reuse to create multiple queues, topics, and connection factories. So what I've done here is I've enabled automatic recording for WLST under the Preferences WLST Script Recording tab. This means when I click the Lock and Edit button, it will automatically start recording the commands. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a JMS module for example purposes, and then we'll see what the resulting WLST script uh, looks like. So for this, I'm going to uh, create one connection factory, one distributed queue, and one topic. For this example, uh, the names aren't really that important because what we're going to do is take the WST commands um, and parameterize them, and then that will show you where you, how you can uh, change the names in the script. So I've gone ahead and activated my changes. We see where the WST commands are stored there. So I'll go ahead and open this script, and this is these are all the commands that were generated by the uh, the actions that I took in the admin console. So you can take these commands, and uh, Python allows you to create methods that you can parameterize. Um, that's what I'm going to do first for creating a JMS module. Then I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is split them up, the, uh, the commands that were generated, split them up into the connection factory, distributed queue, and distributed topic. And then we'll edit them to uh, make use of the parameters. So in case you haven't used uh, Python before or aren't very familiar with WLST, it uses tabs and alignment to define methods. So there's no, there's no braces as you see that what would be typical for Java, for example, or C or any other structured programming language. Here it's just, it uses indentation, which is 
nice sometimes and other times it can be frustrating. Um, so for the JMS module, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. I'm actually going to uh, grab some code that I've used in the past um, that makes it easier to set targets in a parameterized way. So also uh, another area where I'm going to cheat is this um, JMS module path uh, method. And what this does is the path for the mbean where the uh, JMS module lives is kind of long. And instead of creating that every time for each one of the other methods, when I want to go to that mbean and edit it, uh, I have this method. It's kind of a, it's a helper method. So now um, if we look at what I did with the JMS module, it creates a JMS module and looks up a cluster and then takes and then sets the deployment target for the module for the cluster. So this shows how I'm, I'm generating the JMS module path and then we will repeat that for each one of the other methods and make life a little bit easier. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going through and taking the parameters and making them and applying them to the different commands that were generated before. So here we'll see off the JMS module path that there is a connection factories slash the connection factory name. So since the that path is reused a few times um, in this method, then I'm going to go ahead and store that as a variable. So here, uh, for this example, I'm setting the the name and the J and DI name to be the same. I find that it makes it easier to find what I'm looking for uh, in the console. Also, you'll see the way that the WST commands are generated is there's one line to to CD to the mbean, um, and then followed by the lines that are applicable for the settings for that mbean. So as you're going through and learning WLST, this is a way that you can um, understand the inbean structure a little bit better. So now I'm going to just do a search and replace for the last three instances to make it a little bit easier and faster. YouTube has a 15 minute video limit, so I'm trying to stay under that. Now I'll go through and change the uh, connection factory name with my parameter. And there we go. So now that method's done. Um, creating di distributed queues and topics is um, fairly easy. Doesn't take too many commands um, to do that. So again, uh, for the queues and topics, I'm setting the name and the JNDI name to be the same. Um, it's just the way that, that I like to, to set it up. It, I find that it makes it um, easier.
as you're watching this, you'll notice that I actually accidentally removed the create uniform distributed topic line. Um, I'm going to go back and add that uh, in a few minutes or a few moments. So now I've defined my parameters or my methods and I'm going to go ahead and create the rest of the script that will connect to my running admin server um, and run the configuration commands. So for this example, I've created the JMS or I'm going to create the JMS module called another JMS module. And then we'll create a connection factory and distributed queues. And the great thing about creating using these parameters uh, to to use the using these parameterized methods is that so on this line I have I'm creating one connection factory and I can create two three more uh, so a total of three by just adding an extra line of code so next I'll create my queues um, on a project in the past uh, where I worked it was uh, we had about 40 queues so every time we set up a domain a new domain to replicate that environment and create those queues it was very painful uh, until we started using WLST and then it made it a lot easier so you see with uh, four lines of code I'm creating four distributed queues um, now I'm just going to, for the, in the interest of time, create two topics. Um, now I'm going to go through and uh, add the save and activate, so that will activate the changes. And at the moment what I'm going to do is go through and uh, fix some of the mistakes that I made. So I didn't have the cluster name for the JMS module. Um, that's necessary. You have to specify default targeting. I also accidentally put a comma there when I meant to have a period and that caused an error so I had to go back and fix that. And go back and put my line for actually creating the distributed topic. Okay, so now I'm going to run the command run WST to do the script and we'll see it's connecting just a quick look at the at the modules there the module doesn't exist uh, so now the script is complete and there's my JMS module for another JMS module and you'll see there's all my queues and topics so this is a very useful feature for learning WST the ability to record the scripts um, and you can also record scripts to do pretty much anything you can do in the admin console for JDBC resources, creating servers, clusters, um, JMS servers, and, and file stores, and so on. So if you're interested in learning WLST, I would uh, encourage you to use the recording functionality to figure out how the what the inbean structure looks like and how the commands are orchestrated in order to make the changes uh, to the configuration that you want. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is Oracle Web Logic. And uh, we'd love to hear some feedback about what you would like to see. Uh, if this was useful, let us know. If there's anything else that you'd like to see, let us know. And we will try to um, accommodate the requests that come in. Um, so thanks for your time.